Hello, welcome to Murder in the UK. The case we're looking at today is that of wife murderer Adrian Prout. Adrian was a millionaire who shared a lavish lifestyle with wife Kate. But in 2007, they separated and her divorce claim was more than he could cope with. So he strangled her. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without the body ever being discovered. Several years later, a new girlfriend persuaded him to take a lie detector test. He failed. He then conceded his innocence and confirmed to police where the body was buried. To find out more about this case, visit www.murderuk.com or stay watching for a video documentary about this case. Thank you. For newly married couple, Adrian and Kate Prout, the rural village of Red Marley with its acres of green fields was the perfect place to settle. The couple met in 1999 through Kate's brother. They quickly formed a relationship and married in 2000 and set up home together in the village of Red Marley where they bought a farm. It's, it's a sort of normal village community, really, with a school and a church and a pub down at the bottom of the road. It's um, a very uneventful village, really, in many ways. Nothing significant really happens, uh, which is quite how we like it. Mm. Having come from a farming family, Adrian was keen to build up his own farm with new wife Kate, a retired teacher. So they pooled their savings to buy their dream home. Kate Prout was born into a family of farmers and after she retired, she was a pillar of the community. This is the Red Marley Woods to the left here, which is where um, the pheasant shoots were held. And the right the way across here is the farm. And he used to go around in an old clapped out Land Rover, which he used to feed the pheasants. So he was frequently down there used to grow cereals and things of that kind. He was pretty active as a businessman, I think. He had quite a bit of farm machinery down there, including a nice JCB. <laughs> While Adrian ran the business side of things, wife Kate settled into the more social side of the community. They seemed quite friendly when I spoke to them. And I used to see her, see her more than I used to see him because I always used to be walking with her two dogs. Kate Prout was a retired primary school teacher. Uh, she was very uh, well liked within the community, involved in a lot of activities within the area she lived as well. Over the years, the couple integrated more and more, with Adrian becoming well known in the area, mostly due to the success of his pheasant shoots. I think he liked to have them every weekend or every couple of weekends and the guns would get in the woods there and shoot as many as they could. <laughs> Farmers and that used to come and land other landowners and have a big game shoot there, you know. And that caused the other gamekeeper to make sure the foxes and other people or that didn't kind of take him, <laughs> help their south from. But he had quite a, quite a good thing going there, I think. But as Adrian's business grew, locals noticed the couple appeared to spend more time apart. His wife used to go to the local church and she would talk to villagers, obviously. And the general feeling was that it was a bit of a strained relationship. She went on holiday in September and October 2007, uh, separate, separate from Adrian. With the couple spending more time apart, and even holidaying separately, it didn't appear unusual to the neighbours when in November 2007, they hadn't seen Kate for a few days. Well, I thought she's say, gone away for a holiday or something. The, the general consensus was that she's run off with somebody or whatever, the normal type of village gossip, really. Uh, none of it based on fact, of course. But village gossip aside, 
Adrian Prout becomes concerned about his wife's whereabouts after five days missing and calls the police. Police emergency, what's your emergency? Police log the call as a missing person report and need to establish if Kate has simply gone away of her own accord or if something more sinister has happened. So on the 10th of November 2007, uh, that's the day that uh, Adrian Prout reported his wife Kate Prout is missing uh, and the police then attended Red Hill Farm uh, to take the missing person report and provide a grading as to whether that is a standard, medium or high risk missing person. Well, the first thing that you would do on receiving a missing person report is establish whether this was very unusual for them. Some people have quite, you know, flighty lifestyles. They go off on holiday, they nip off here and there. How unusual is it that this person has gone missing? I did, but I thought if things weren't good, someone would have rang me or, you know, I assumed she was okay. In any missing persons case, police need to put together a timeline of the person's last known movements. Kate Pratt was last seen uh, home in Red Marley. Uh, she, the last time she was heard from was at 1529 on the 5th of November 2007 when she made a phone call to her bank uh, regarding some money she was looking to withdraw from a joint account with her husband. In terms of somebody withdrawing money, um, potentially that could indicate they, they might be looking to go missing. Kate was an independently wealthy woman having been left inheritance from her parents and had the financial means to make a new life for herself. But where could she have gone? Where did you think she'd gone? I thought she was staying with her sister, so her half-sister down in Bexel on sea And there's been no contact from Kate since you last saw her? No. But as six days pass, and with no sightings of Kate, a police missing person investigation intensifies. Now, Kate Prout went missing on November the 5th. She lived and worked on a large dairy farm in Red Marley in the forest of Dean. Concern for Kate's welfare increases. Is there more to her disappearance than meets the eye? There's so many tales going round and rumors. You don't know what to believe and what not to believe that she'd just left him and gone. And as the hunt gathers pace... The family are desperate to know what's happened to her. Police take action. In Gloucestershire, police are making inquiries as to the whereabouts of farmer's wife, Kate Prout, who was reported missing by her husband, Adrian. Were you aware of appointments or things that she might have had during this last week? No. Is she a person that keeps appointments? 
Yeah. Is she, she as a doctors or dentist? I mean, does she keep them upon? Mm. Is she reliable for things like that? Oh yeah. Is there any reason why she would go and not cancel appointments like that? Because that's what we believe has happened. That she's had appointments this week, which you know normally you'd expect her to attend, mm. and and she's not kept those. No. Having interviewed Adrian about his wife's last known movements, police attention turns to the community. It's quite a small community, so the community would then be starting to talk amongst themselves about it. Word would soon get round and hopefully information would come back into the police as well. There was a knock at the door then, you know, and there was the inquiry and they said, when was the last time we seen her? I'd be seeing her with her dogs and things like that. I'd be seeing her do dogs loose because they thought perhaps she might have fell down somewhere. And but I don't think anybody really see had seen her or heard anything about her. At this early stage, the police would be wanting to rule out the fact she's just disappeared of her own free will. She might have come to some sort of accident on the farm and uh, be out there needing some help, can't walk, for example, or there might have been something more sinister happened to her. None of the locals have seen Kate since her disappearance, but they do provide the police with new information. But there has been some issues in the relationship recently, and Kate had moved out for a short time before they reconciled. So neighbors presumed the pair had had another tiff. She'd left because of the tensions and the situation. And his view was that she would turn up eventually. The police would be looking into other possibilities in terms of where Kate may have gone. It could be that she'd have disappeared of her own free will, tried to go on holiday, for example. Um, tried to get away from the relationship with, with Adrian for a number of days. These are all possibilities that the, the police would be looking into, but they could also do that in tandem with searching um, quite intensively at the same time as well. There'd be a lot of different strands to the investigation happening at the same time. There was nothing to suggest in the very early stages that there had been foul play. Inquiries reveal Kate is a wealthy woman in her own right having been left a large inheritance. Having been on holiday several times over the past year with other people, police wonder if she's met someone else. Without any concrete leads, the police make a direct appeal to the public for information. Kate Price was last seen on the 5th of November. Her husband, Adrian, is currently staying with friends while police search for her. Today, they made a direct appeal for her to come forward. Kate, if you're watching this broadcast and you're able to do so, we urge you to contact us. Police inquiries intensify and calls to Kate's bank and mobile phone provider immediately spark concerns. These are kind of your proof of life checks. You're looking to see whether that person uh, has had any activity on these things before they went missing and then anything afterwards. If they suddenly stop, that indicates that the person may have passed away. People have got to live somehow. They need money. They need their belongings. So if they don't have any of those things and there's no evidence of them having access to funds, then there is a real fear that something has happened to them. People don't just disappear off the face of the earth for no reason. So we're really looking to then see whether there's any indication that person is, is still alive. If the answer to that is no, then we're really considering this ought to be a, a, a murder investigation and really ramping up the police response, getting more resources in to search the area. Police find no evidence of a digital footprint since she went missing. It appears Kate has vanished without a trace. Suddenly, the missing person's investigation changes focus as police make a decision.
police arrested Adrian Prout on the 27th of November 2007. They would be wanting to interview him, see if his account matched up with the account he initially gave to the police uh, on the 11th of November after Kate was reported missing. This is a very strong statistic. Two a week, on average, women killed by a, a former partner, which always puts a partner or a former partner at the top of the list of suspects when somebody goes missing. News travels fast around the community. Could Adrian really be behind Kate's disappearance? Wait. I think I was told that they had arrested him. Couldn't really believe it, really. We saw this reporter standing there in front of our house talking about a suspected crime in Red Marley. <laughs> and as you can well imagine, that sort of got our attention for a while. And uh, we were a bit puzzled, really. Gloucestershire police say that this morning they've arrested a 45-year-old man on suspicion of murder, and he continues to be questioned. With Adrian under arrest, the investigation ramps up. Gloucestershire police are now able to search the home. And they deploy 50 officers, heat sensing helicopters, and sniffer dogs to trawl the 276 acres of farmland. By arresting him, they bring him greater powers of search of the property. Uh, can seize things like his computer, mobile phones, things that may have some sort of di digital evidence that might link him to the disappearance of Kate Brown. I was out in the garden doing whatever I was doing, and this helicopter was at quite low level and was circling round here all the time. And it had uh, an arm out the side with a device on the end, which I thought was probably a camera, but it was up there for quite a long time. The police did a very good job. I mean, they, they were around here quite a long time. And they, you know, they seemed to search everywhere that they could think of. And, I mean, they came back two or three times to ask you if you'd thought about anything and we remembered something, but... Um... The frenzied police activity brings a media circus to Red Marley a quaint rural village formerly well-known only amongst the farming community. Press agency journalist Emily Pennink was one of those alerted to the story. The story was a huge part of, of our daily news, so I was following all the developments. I think it really caught the imagination of the media because of who she was and the life that she had led before her disappearance. Despite the intense searches, the police uncover no evidence linking Adrian Prout to his wife's disappearance. They have no choice but to release him without charge and concede perhaps Kate Prout has just disappeared of her own free will. This was very difficult for the police. There was no body, no crime scene. There was no clues. There was no motivation. The police had no positive evidence to suggest that she had come to harm. So it, there was still a chance that she was safe and she'd simply gone off on holiday to, and hadn't told anybody, like, you know, people, people do sometimes. With Adrian released, and once the initial commotion dies down, life in the village goes back to normal. I did see him around, and he would pass a time of day with you, but that was all. He carried on as normal, carried on with his work, and ran his business. He continued farming, and continued to run the pheasant shoot as well, and spent most of his time doing that. And so for Adrian Prout, life moves on. He met a new woman, fell in love, and they start a new life together. The, the, the whole thing sort of faded away to a large extent. And that was really the end of it. We didn't really hear any more about her. And he had a girlfriend down the road. 
Adrian Prout may have forgotten about his wife, but police haven't. A key discovery during another in-depth search of the house casts extreme doubt on Kate's missing status. Kate's passport and bank cards are found. They found that her passport and all the other stuff, credit cards and so on, was still in the house. Adrian Prout is arrested for a second time. The evidence is still quite circumstantial. There's no body, uh, so it's a real struggle to actually corroborate sufficient evidence to charge him with the murder of Kate Prout. But it indicates that he is clearly a suspect in this case. Rumours now flood through the village. Well, they all have their own points of view, you know. They said, oh, well, I expect she's burned him and get back to the pigs, the pigs had eaten her. All kinds of things like that. Police believe Adrian Prout knows more about the disappearance of his wife, Kate, than he's letting on. But once again, they don't have enough evidence. And he is released. With police still searching for Kate Prout, they soon make a surprising discovery. It appears Kate has left clues behind. It really exposed what was going on in their relationship. But will they lead police to Adrian's door for a third time? In Gloucestershire, Kate Prout remains a missing person. Another year passes. Police suspect she's been killed, but despite her husband having been arrested twice, there's no evidence linking him to her disappearance, and no charges have been brought. A case such as this would be immensely challenging for all involved from the police point of view. The investigation team, uh, through to the people searching, they would all be feeling real pressure to, uh, to try and find Kate Prout try and bring some sort of closure to the family. After 14 months, police inform Adrian Prout he is no longer a suspect in his wife's disappearance. He moves on with his life, asking his girlfriend Debbie to move in with him. The couple soon announce they are expecting a child together. What we can see from his behaviour, getting into a new relationship, getting a woman pregnant within that relationship, he's certainly not concerned about where his wife's gone. It's about him ultimately starting his new life. But then everything changes. So Adrian Prout might have felt that it was all going to quiet down and Kate's disappearance would, would just slowly slowly fade away but the police hadn't given up and they uncovered Kate Prout's diary Sunday the 18th of March 2007 awoke with Adrian nice time met with him after the archers to discuss our future then he told me that he did not want to continue being my husband wanted a divorce has had no real feelings for me anymore I wonder how his mind works he seems so mixed up inside, and I still care for him so much. It's all over for good. No hope for a future together. Devastated, really, as I still have hope. Officially separated now, as very frightened to return. He went mad. I really thought that my end had come. I was very, very shaken. So Kate's diary revealed a number of domestic violence issues, uh, a rather turbulent marriage to Adrian Prout. It seemed that he was a very controlling partner and Kate was the one who was controlled. And from that perspective, it followed a very typical trajectory of a coercively controlling marriage. And the domestic violence wasn't all. 
it seems that the marriage was still quite turbulent. They were looking to uh, divorce around the time that she disappeared. The discovery of Kate Prout's diary leads police to uncover the crux of the divorce proceedings. At the very heart of this case is difficulties over the divorce settlement. Kate Prout wanted £800,000. Adrian Prout offered £600,000 and he really didn't want to give her any more money than that because if he had, it would have meant him having to sell the farm and really changing his life. For Adrian, knowing that his wife was not only leaving him, therefore taking back control of her own life, she was financially going to take from him also. And the problem there is that she was considered a possession. Adrian saw her as an object that he owned. The minute that she has the potential to leave him and also take his possessions with her, well, that's a problem that needs to be solved. Sixteen months after Kate's disappearance, and police finally have enough evidence, and crucially, a motive to make their move. They now believe Adrian Prout murdered his wife over money, but they still need to find a body. The fact that there's an ongoing divorce issue and that money is a factor in that, those are all alarm bells that would be ringing for the police. On the 10th of March 2009, Adrian Prout is arrested for a third time on suspicion of murder. He is then charged with the murder of Kate Prout and appears at Cheltenham Magistrates Court. It would have been a case of third time lucky for the police and there would have been a real feeling that there was finally some movement. Ten months after he is charged, Adrian arrives for his trial flanked by new girlfriend Debbie. Despite having never found the body of Kate, the prosecution needs to convince a jury she is dead and that Adrian killed her. The police and the CPS worked really hard, did a great job in actually bringing this case to court, but they would have had a nagging doubt in the back of their mind that they might not have won this case. No body convictions. We we have got some convictions, but they're very, very difficult to get. And that's largely because, you know, in a court, it has to be beyond reasonable doubt. And if the body isn't there to give us the clues, to give us those forensics, to tell us the story, it's very, very difficult then to create a story that's plausible and convincing for a jury. Two years and three months to the day of Kate Prout's disappearance, Adrian Prout is convicted of her murder. He is sentenced to life with a minimum term of 18 years. There'd be real mixed emotions. You'd be feeling quite pleased that there'd been a conviction of Adrian Prout. But at the same time, there would be that continual frustration that the body was never found. You can never bring that closure to the family. And as a result of that, you'd always feel like you'd let the family down to a certain extent. Adrian Prout is in prison, but his new fiancée, Debbie, family and friends refuse to believe his guilt. With a huge wave of support behind him, a miscarriage of justice campaign begins. Adrian Prout had always protested his innocence quite strongly, and a lot of people believed that he had nothing to do with Kate's disappearance, let alone murdered her. What's compelling about Adrian's behaviour is the community know that he's been abusive to Kate. So when she goes missing, you'd automatically imagine, wouldn't you, that they think, well, it's clearly him. But actually, they don't feel that. And he has a great deal of support. People believe he's completely innocent. With a campaign to release Adrian Prout growing, police are desperate to find Kate's body to prove beyond doubt that the right man is behind bars. By recovering a body, you then have another crime scene to work with. You can recover forensic evidence, you can do post-mortem examinations, and actually establish how that person died. 
After two and a half years, and with one man in jail, and with no new evidence, police reluctantly reveal they are calling off the search for Kate Prout. With a police search like this, it will come to a stage where they've exhausted all the lines of inquiry. There is literally nothing else for the police to do that can progress the case. It would have been a very frustrating decision for the police to make. They would really wanted to find Kate's body and bring some sort of closure to the family. But there has to come a point where they draw that line and say, we can't do any more here to try and resolve this case. With police retreating, the campaign to free Adrian Prout intensifies and his fiancée Debbie deploys a final weapon in a drastic bid to prove his innocence. She persuades her partner to take a lie detector test so that she can satisfy herself and gather some evidence. My name is John Cargill. I'm a polygraph examiner. The correct title for a polygraph examiner is a forensic psychophysiologist which means detection by psychology and physiology. Adrian's girlfriend hopes the outcome of the lie detector test will support his case. I spoke to Debbie over the phone many, many times, and then we got the questions right. And the result all hangs on one question. Very simple questions, don't forget. Did you kill your wife, Kate? Adrian Prout has been jailed for the murder of his wife, Kate, who disappeared in 2007. Her body has never been found, but her diary was, and it detailed a marriage blighted by domestic violence, heading for divorce and bitter arguments over money. While police believe they have the right man behind bars, Adrian's new fiancée, Debbie, mother to his baby daughter, is heading a campaign for his release, claiming his conviction is a miscarriage of justice. He was obviously clearly promoting the idea that he was not responsible for her demise. People supported his view and believed him. There's a real lack of evidence in the case. There was no body, uh, the evidence was largely circumstantial, and Adrian Prout, he was convincing a lot of people that he was innocent along the way. Having served 18 months in prison, it's finally time for Adrian Prout to take the lie detector test. He has to sign a consent form to allow me to do the test, and he seemed to want to think about it at great length. I kept popping back and eventually said, OK, I may as well. I may as well. For Debbie's sake. No, do it for your own sake, I said. He said, no, I may as well do it. OK, I'll go ahead. So we did it. Adrian Prout answers the questions put to him, hoping the results might allow police to reopen the case, allowing him to go free. He did the test. The questions were very simple. Um, did you kill your wife? Did, did you apply any bills to kill your wife? Do you know where the body is? Etc. So he was um, answering no. When Don examines the results, they are astounding. At the end of it, I said, my charts are showing that you're a murderer. And he went, mm hmm. That was a little shrug of his shoulder. And I said, are you saying my charts are wrong? And he said, no, they're not wrong, under his breath. That was enough for me. Adrian's downfall is clearly taking the polygraph test. When you take a lie detector test, unless you are specifically trained in how to get through them, the likelihood is that you will fail. But there's some pressure there. He has his supporters. So if he's unwilling to take that test, to some degree, he's evidencing his guilt. So he takes a risk. He believes that maybe he can be the one to get through it. When I spoke to Debbie, obviously it's a very difficult conversation I'm going to have with her because this is the first time. She believes in a guy for so long and loved a guy so much, had a child by him, that I'm going to break the bad news to her that, sorry, but you've been misguided and that your fiancé is actually a murderer. You see the resignation in her sort of thinking, going, 
This is not what I wanted. Adrian Prout murdered his wife, Kate. But for almost four years, he's denied his involvement and denied Kate's family the chance to bury her and fully grieve for her. Having failed the polygraph test, his devastated fiancée, Debbie, confronts him, begging him to reveal the truth. He just said, he just confessed. Um, what were the words he used? I'm sorry, I did. What's really significant about this case is just how convincing a murderer can be. That you can literally carry out a brutal killing of your wife and then seemingly convince the whole world that you're an innocent man. Four years after Kate went missing and with the hunt for her body having gone cold, police have their biggest breakthrough. Adrian Prout agrees to show police where her body is. Having now confirmed he murdered Kate, it leaves one unanswered question. What had happened on that fateful day four years ago? On the day of the murder, Adrian Prout is preparing a pheasant shoot for the following day. Kate Prout goes to see him. And there's an argument around the divorce, around the money. He then strangles her. He then wraps her body in a curtain and puts the body in the back of the Land Rover and goes to the pub. Firstly, he's having a pint with his friends, acting normally, whilst his dead wife is in the back of his Land Rover. But then to wake up the following day and go on a pheasant shoot, it demonstrates that he clearly thinks that he's gonna get away with it. He has no concern. He's just not connected to this crime at all. She's a problem, he's created a solution and everything's gonna be all right. During this period, that lack of remorse, that lack of compassion, that lack of concern, and that focus on himself to move on to another relationship is very, very typical of somebody on the psychopathic spectrum, a type of person who is very self-focused and lives in the moment. Even in police interviews after Kate's disappearance, Adrian remains aloof and seemingly unaffected by the situation. We now know this is the voice of the cold-blooded killer, who just six days earlier had strangled his wife. There's been no contact from Kate since you last saw her around lunchtime on Monday. No. When Adrian Prout's interviewed by the police, he appears to be completely unemotional and completely non-concerned that his wife has disappeared for a period of time. In fact, he kind of suggests that this is just something that she might have done because she needed to get away or there's no real drama. And even though weeks gone by, you had no concern about her well-being then? You, you... Well, I did, but I thought if things weren't good, someone would have rang me or, you know, I assumed she was OK. Adrian Prout felt that he had actually solved a problem through this homicide. So he wasn't concerned that he had done it. He would have been concerned, however, that he wasn't held to account for it. So probably his calm behaviour after the homicide was that one, he'd solved a problem, so he was feeling a lot calmer than he had before, and he had to appear as if he was not responsible. You know, I assumed she was OK. To the police, that would be wholly unusual. A partner whose wife has gone missing for a period of time should be panic-stricken, should be phoning everybody, talking to anybody, searching for them wildly. And actually, he seems like she might have just gone down the shops. Despite trying to get away with murder and trying to convince everyone around him he had been wrongly convicted, it took a simple polygraph test to reveal Adrian Prout for the man he really is. A cold-blooded killer. And after four years of searching, 
police are finally about to find the body of Kate Prout. From where the body was found, it's possible that Adrian Prout put a lot of thought into where he buried Kate Prout's body. So much so that he would probably hope that she would never be found and ultimately he may have got away with the murder of her. But the pen which housed the pheasants mainly is literally in front of you there. And it was uh, fenced off with wire fencing and that was where he put the young pheasants and allowed them to grow obviously before releasing them into the wild, so to speak. That was where they found his wife. On the night of the murder, and after he returned from the pub, Adrian Prout dug a five-foot-deep, five-foot-long hole inside the pheasant pen under a feeder in the woods, a mile from the farmhouse he shared with wife Kate. It was here he dumped her body. At one o'clock this afternoon, we have found human remains close to the location Adrian Prout identified as the place he buried his wife. With a body, police could now fit the final pieces of the puzzle together. However, a post-mortem was unable to reveal the cause of death. Whether Adrian Prout intended to kill his wife, whether he planned it, or whether it was just something that happened in a, in a moment of rage, only he really knows. The actions he took after the death of Kate Prout indicates that he actually really tried to get away with the murder of her. The type of murder that Adrian Prout carried out is sadly one of the most common. It's domestic homicide. It involves control and power, and it happens regularly every week in the UK. Thank you for watching. Murder UK is a website dedicated to giving the facts about murders and serial killers within the UK. Please consider subscribing and press that bell icon to be notified when we update new videos. Thank you.